Welcome to the Scandinavian Mind podcast, our weekly show about how technology is changing the creative industries. Today in the program, how ISPO takes the lead in outdoor. We are revisiting our trip to ISPO Munich from last year, ahead of the German trade show's upcoming editions this summer. In this episode, you will hear from Lena Haushofer, exhibition manager at ISPO, Christian W. Andersen, creative director of Zeitgeist ISPO, where we will talk about how ISPO Munich have evolved in recent years, connecting outdoor with sustainability in lifestyle and the role of trade shows in 2024. My name is Conrad Olsson, Editor-in-Chief and Founder of Scandinavian Mind and I'm here with our Editor-at-Large and our man on the ground in Munich, Mr. Fredrik Ekström. How are you, Fredrik? Thank you, Conrad. I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Good to have you back on the podcast. So, uh, listeners, remember that you were on a couple of weeks ago where we published your conversation with the guys from uh, High Snobiety. That was also recorded at ISPO. So, for anyone who hasn't heard that episode and want to go back and, and, and uh, listen to that, it's available in this feed. So, when you came back from, from Munich with all this material, we, we just realized this was too much to cover in one episode. So, we put the high snobiety stuff in one episode and we kind of gathered the interviews with the representatives from ISPO into this one and I thought this was interesting from from uh, several different uh, points of view and let's, let's get into it a little bit ahead of these conversations you've had because to me this is a story both about kind of the role of the trade show in this day and age but also how outdoor has evolved and I think uh, you know both you and I but you certainly are well versed in both the world of outdoor and the world of trade shows we've both had our fair share of, of trade show visits <laughs> through the years what was your um uh, kind of reaction going to ispo uh, this time around what were your impressions how did it feel i mean um yeah first of all it's it's uh, it's correct you both of us have a profound love hate relationship to trade shows <laughs> i would say so yeah <laughs> and uh, uh, visiting them, working for them, working at them uh, for, for many years. And I mean, it's um, trade shows are it's such an it's such a fantastic platform for for communities or industries uh, to get together and meet, um, inspire, educate each other. Mm. Um, however, I mean, we all know that trade shows, they they've been struggling for many years. And, and I, I would say that maybe for 10 years, there would be some kind of identity crisis for, for many trade shows, trying to figure out like what will be the next direction to, to evolve and, and how will they reimagine themselves when the buyer-seller relationship, the transactional parts were not as relevant as it used to be. Um, and so, so it's it's been nice seeing how ISPO been been tackling this because in it, ISPO used to be a very transactional kind of trade show many years ago, and I remember the time when I was uh, working for Treetorn, where we decided mm. that we shouldn't be part of ISPO anymore. That that was in like 2015, I think. So it's about nine years ago now. Um, and I would say that I, around 2020, 2021, when ISPO turned 50 years, they started some kind of journey towards being more of a modern contemporary approach to what the industry actually wanted and needed, which means that they have evolved into being more of a um, platform for inspiration education entertainment and mm -hmm. as lena says mm -hmm. like a sports festival where people come together where you have uh, branded stories master classes workshops etc so the, so this year when when um, um i visited ispo and we're re really like digging in and then talking with a lot of people you could also feel that it happened. It, it's been happening now for 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 the last 
couple of years. So right. um, it's nice to see. It's, it's, it's actually a place where you now can feel that there's so much stuff coming in. The entire industry is kind of like excited of being there and building up their, um, their, their presence for uh, what we say for, for the um, fans of brands. Mm. And how do you think they are tackling? Because, you know, there, there's such a huge sort of macro topics around sustainability uh, that's important for, for the industry. There's also this kind of move for outdoor and sports. There's also this kind of move for outdoor and sports that is, is kind of moving closer to the fashion space and the lifestyle space. How do you see those uh, kind of uh, themes playing out at ISPO? I would say that um, that's one of the, the biggest strengths, how they manage to balance these two worlds that, that are highly influential for both, I mean, both outdoor and fashion, I, w- I would say, mm. like sustainability and, uh, and hype, uh, uh, so to speak. So what's a, what ISPO have done is they have created these kind of different areas where you have the sustainability hub, where you drive like cross industry talks with the green stage and deep conversations. And they built in a space in the sustainability hub that is called the material lab, where you can um, encounter all new kind of innovations and new kind of fabrics and materials, uh, which is really interesting. And on the other hand, they have built up the world of sight guys that um, uh, Christian is the creative director for, which is more of a cultural platform uh, with brands like Houdini, Snowpeak, Sandqvist, etc., where they come alive and they have a different ty- uh, kind of talks. But then they also have like pushed the boundaries a little bit more and made that collaboration with High Snobiety and created an area called 520M uh, by ISPO and High Snobiety, which is more of a, a space for limited edition uh, promotions and talks and where you really get into the minds and trends of cultural pioneers. So what's mm-hmm. interesting with this is that they, they managed to balance these two worlds of like super innovation, trust, uh, authentic uh, responsibility in the sustainability hub with the hype and newness and cultural pioneers with high snobiety and zeitgeist. Mm. However, I could also say that, I mean, one of the challenges they have is that even in this micro universe of ISPO, these two worlds are, um, they don't mix and mingle so much. Uh, mm-hmm. So you, you go into the high snobiety area and you're like um, immerse in this world of gorp core and puffer jackets and, and styling, etc. And then you, <laughs> then you, then you leave that space and you come out in the real world and you see, you meet all the brands and then you go into the sustainability hub and they talk about mushroom, bloom foams, uh, circularities and a super deep talk about uh, uh, building up the supply chains, etc. And these two worlds, they are still a little bit, um, it, it, it's, to- it's different audiences in, in the different yeah, arenas. Disconnected in um, a way, yeah. In, in a way, they, so, so they're both there and it's, so they're both there and, and it's really interesting to be able to move in between the worlds. But I, I would guess that one of the challenges for the next season is to merge them a little bit more, more together. All right, Fredrik. So just to be clear, uh, you visited what's called the ISPO Munich, and there are different versions of ISPO. I think for for uh, people generally in the in the industry, you just think of ISPO as ISPO. But what are the different uh, different kinds of ISPOs out there right now? ISPO Munich is the one which is like the the larger uh, trade show, which takes place in end of November, beginning of December. This mm-hmm. year, I think it will be on December 2. And then you have like the smaller version of ISPO uh, Munich, which is called Outdoor by ISPO. 
Uh, both are in Munich, on, on Messe Munich, but uh, outdoor Bay Espoo is in the summer, in June, and Espoo Munich is in, in the autumn, November, December, kind of break point. So Espoo Munich, the bigger one, they have about 2,400 um, uh, exhibitors from 50 plus countries, something like that. So, right. so that, that's the bigger one. All right, so let's get into it. You managed to meet two representatives from ISPO during your visit. And first, we're going to hear from Lena Haushofer. She's the exhibition manager. Uh, talk about your meeting with Lena and why you decided to talk to her. Lena is the exhibition manager, kind of like runs, runs parts of the show uh, that down in Munich. And it's it, what's interesting to talk about uh, with, with her. To t- it was interesting to talk with her about... Um, the visions moving forward, because when you visit ISPO, you can see that they are turning into this kind of platform. Um, so I wanted to talk with her about this um, sports festival kind of movement they, they're building up. And she, she explains that pretty well. All right, let's hear it. Here's now Lena Haushofer, exhibition manager at ISPO. Yeah, well, what we did is more going into festivalization and new formats, um, as you said. So talking about new formats, um, we now cooperating with High Snobiety, uh, which uh, probably, uh, especially sports fashion industry knows. Um, it started with a blog. Uh, so David was writing <laughs> blog articles. And now it's uh, like the main platform with... Uh, thousands of people um, in form of culture, sports, uh, lifestyle, but also outdoors. And um, they they are in, in contact with many, many outdoor brands who are not exhibiting anymore um, at outdoor by ISPO and also ISPO Munich, of course. Um, so what we did is we reached out to Heisner Baidi because we knew that um, they have contacts to these outdoor brands like North Face, Salomon, um, Mammut, which we would love to have back at ISPO Munich. But we know that the normal square meters and the normal trade show halls are not uh, from interest anymore because they're going more uh, D2C and they are... Um, interested in the culture and the pioneers and the gen set. So a really new target group, uh, which we haven't uh, targeted uh, so far, but we want to go or we love to go into it. And that's why we think that Heisen Obiety is the perfect partner. And we launched a new brand called ISPO 520M. Mm-hmm. Um, 520 meters is the highest point of Munich. That's why <laughs> we, um, yeah, we have this name, which I really love. Um, it's the highest point in Munich, the Olympic uh, Hill, and it's called ISPO 520M. And um, yeah, we made it that uh, brands like North Face, Mammut, uh, but also and Wonder, uh, Sanquist, they are back at ISPO Munich with these new formats. And it, it's not just the highest nobiety um, 520M brand, but also Zeitgeist. So we are working together with Christian Andersen, who is former uh, project director of SIF, a um, trade show in Copenhagen. And uh, what we are doing here in this area is we are combining culture, fashion, outdoor. So bringing really uh, new outdoor brands uh, to life. Uh, with also fashion shows. Uh, we have Stefan Ashpool here. Um, so brands like Houdini or Helinox uh, or also Snow Peak, who were part of um, yeah the normal ISPO Munich, but they said they are not finding them anymore within like joint pavilions in the Scandinavian outdoor village, but uh, they are interested in the new uh, target group and also the culture pioneers and more uh, fashion retailers. So that's the perfect area for them. Um, so yeah, that's quite new uh, for 23. Mm-hmm. So the, the collaborations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you have uh, High Snobiety you had last year as well. Uh, you know, and side guys new for this, but you also are really strong in the area uh, of the sustainability hub. Uh, could you explain a little bit more what's going on there? 
last year we had the sustainability app in the future lab so this is um the area i i can tell a bit more later mm -hmm. um but uh, we found that the sustainability app is the perfect place uh, or should be the perfect place in the outdoor halls so a uh, sustainability hub is uh quite of a new concept because we included the material lab so uh, what we did is we are showcasing new products like hemp and mushrooms uh, where textiles can be made out from so um, and also we get back uh, lots of brands who are not telling about the products but about uh, the ESG strategies and how they make uh, it happen that uh, uh, the textiles can be recycled and can be uh, back in the, um, in the um, circularity. Um, and uh, we have the, scre the green stage also within the sustainability hub. And um, it's, I mean, I was impressed how many people were there mm -hmm. sitting and listening to the talks. And we also had a cross industry session with IFAT Munich, with, uh, which is the um, trade show for uh, environmental technology, talking about textile recycling. Um, and that's that's a thing we want to um, also have at Ispo Munich, like talking cross industry, not having just the sports industry. And um, yeah, talking about new formats, what we did here is um, the Future Lab. In the Future Lab, it's not about products, but about uh, telling stories and also talking about um, tech and health tech and um, digital solution providers. So we have um, also brand new with 93 startups, I think, right mm -hmm. now. So a lot of brand new and startups here and um, having or creating an experience hall where you have a huge main stage with panel discussion, master classes, workshops. So really interaction and education about uh, different topics. Mm -hmm. And um, this time we had a lot of highlight topics on international level like Colin Kaepernick and Gordon mm -hmm. Herbert and Yusra Madini and uh, yeah so it's not about products uh, just products anymore but um, listening to people and to personalities uh, talking about mm -hmm. their own experience uh, within sports and yeah let's say bigger than sporting mm -hmm. goods <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We often talk about um, culture as a driving force for change. Is that also something that is part of um, the ISPO strategy, like show, don't tell, like building up these kind of worlds and uh, amusements uh, to show the, the brands like how, how the future will look like? Yeah, for sure. I think um, ISPO is uh, the platform where the whole world, uh, the whole sports industry and um, different cultures from the world are meeting and um, we have to create an area where um, different cultures come together and um, we also have to rethink our target group so it's not just the retailers anymore but it's the chance that it's a culture pioneers who will uh, give us the ideas how it will look like in the future and how brands have to create their um, their their brand and um, how they have to tell their stories so um, yeah with this pool we want to be a place where everybody comes together and um, I mean it's people business it's mm -hmm. all about meeting having parties together but also doing business of course mm -hmm. Thank you. So last question, what can we ex expect happen uh, in the future? So I think in the future, um, ISPA Munich will be more like a festival of sports um, where sports unites. It's the home of sports. So we will have more masterclasses. We will have more workshops um, talking about sustainability, having innovation labs, but um, having also best cases so brands talk about what they did right and educate other brands or the industry and the retail and um, we definitely will have products in, in some of the halls but we also will have more um, stages and more um, festival formats um, within Espo mm -hmm. Munich but still it's the international platform and we want people from all over the world coming together and uh, talking about sports.
All right, that was Lena Haushofer, Exhibition Manager at ISPO, interviewed by our editor-at-large, Fredrik Ekström. All right, so Fredrik, we also had a fellow Scandinavian uh, present at ISPO, uh, Christian Andersen, uh, uh, kind of a, a seasoned guy in the trade show space. He used to run SIF for a long time, so people might know him from there. Uh, now runs something called Sightgeist ISPO. So describe uh, Christian and the work he does for, for Sightgeist. Yeah, I think it's it's really in, it's an interesting move from from Ispo to to get Christian to come and join them because I mean as as you mentioned he's he's grown up in in the world of fashion um, and mm. he can bring that kind of knowledge and thinking in into Ispo um, and the Sightgeist arena is more towards outdoor slash lifestyle cultural kind of platform where you meet um, uh, brands that kind of like want to tap into to that kind of audience or be profile position themselves towards that. And he um, runs the stage there and is, he has a pretty uh, interesting direction going, going with, with side guys where he wants to build up this arena for, for cultural exploration with brands moving in the worlds of, of both outdoor and, and fashion. All right, let's hear it. Here's now Christian W. Andersen, creative director of Sidekeys. When you do a trade industry show um, during the corona crisis, nobody could come. So I was, it was about time to reinvent, rethink. And um, I got into working mode um, and I really wanted to create a platform for first of all the brands where they could maybe see themselves in a different setup, in a different context, a little bit more boutique showroom style, but with the, ben with the benefit of um, the incredible powerful platform that you have at ISPO with all the brands and the buyers, but in a very selected, uh, curated uh, area. Um, and then um, we wanted to have a response to what's going on right now because when I speak to anybody around 15, 18, 20, 25 years old, they ask a lot of a hell of a lot of good questions. They have access to a lot of information and I don't think we had that um, access when I was 20 years old. And there's a demand for authenticity, there's a demand for transparency, but not only with a um, sustainable thought in mind, but people want to know where they spend their money, they want to know who's, what's going on here, why are you doing this, and is this story really true? Um, so we uh, decided to make it a by invitation show only, so that we could select the brands uh, for this season. We could create an environment that um, would make the brands um, potentially stand out even more beautiful and then create an environment where buyers that are both familiar but especially also the ones that are not familiar with these particular brands here today to to explore the products to see that this is uh, wow okay uh, this is not just an outdoor brand this is also a brand that makes something that looks incredible cool and fashionable without necessarily being a big fashion label and then you have the my wish is that we can transform more fans more consumers and, and, and people to fans of these brands because I believe that you can both go trekking or doing a professional sport and also go out and have a good time out in the same clothes which potentially is down the road of being a little bit more thoughtful with the, with the consumption. And then like any, um, I guess like any restaurant or bistro in the world, there are places that still serves good food, but you are more comfortable somewhere than other places, depending on the mood and the crowd. So there's a little bit of um, crowd curation here as well, because it's not about, it's about what you do and what you want to do with your products, but it's definitely also how active you want to be with us we think that 
the future demand is much more about experiences uh, because we've seen um, we've seen an overconsumption, but we also seen that that uh, during um, the Corona crisis, uh, where you could buy anything at home because you needed to buy something to have some pleasure, that that immediately once the world was open again transformed, and that people are way more interested in experiences and. What is unique with the outdoor and sports brands is that they all offer a unique experience. Um, so if you think of, of, you get products with a superior quality, very long lasting often because they are tested for any extreme activity. And if you can look cool and, and feel comfortable or even sexy, uh, I think we are on to a new, to a new uh, world. And so we, we call this uh, a new space for a new era because we think that these products are available but it's difficult sometimes also to to meet them all to to to, to see them in a single space and there's a convenience factor in this as well because if you're a buyer from a huge global department store and you want to dig into this world we think that well we start now with these 18 brands and most of the buyers we have met already feel comfortable here. They feel that this is a setting they can relate to. So it's easier maybe also to, to do all the transactional parts uh, if you feel this is great. So um, thank you, Christian. But um, could you elaborate a little bit like how do you see culture, fashion and outdoor sport merge together today? Thanks. Well, if we um, look into our nightclub here style, area with uh, Stefan Espool, um, he's uh, our special projects collaborator for, for this first edition and for me he was the um, obvious choice, I've known Stefan for, for many years uh, as a, both a very talented but also very inclusive and generous person um, with his activities in Paris and I described him to a lot of people as if you would take Zeitgeist and put that into a person with Stefan's activities, um, with first the uh, Paris uh, Pigalle basketball uh, court that basically created a scene for a lot of kids in Paris, uh, a purpose even, uh, movement, um, performance, uh, he's a designer, he's a musician. Um, so I think everybody related to the sports and fashion industry they also go out they also fall in love they also dance they also do a lot of different activities so for Sideguide this has been so important for us to not talk about culture not talk about things but really do them and and, and then when you do them well you open up you become maybe more um, fragile but as far as I can see um, after the first day here it's uh, this was a very uh, welcome uh, area. Um, people have been playing basketball since uh, five minutes past nine. Um, the musicians are here. Um, the, the runway shows with Karen Bins was uh, so like a high profile international stylist, take, making her take on the outdoor to make it maybe more. Um, no, not maybe, but to make it more relatable for, for everybody. All right, that was Christian W. Andersen, creative director of Sidegeist Ispo, interviewed by Fredrik Ekstrom. All right, so, so Fredrik, just as an end note, what can the industry look forward to with Ispo and why do you think it's important to kind of watch this space if you are, let's say, an outdoor brand or someone looking to interact with, with the outdoor sector? I mean, I think there's... Um two big learnings um, uh, from ISPO. One is, from, one is for uh, the other kind of trade shows, um, mm. to see how ISPO is navigating this uh, development of balancing sustainability, outdoor lifestyle, and creating that kind of relevant space for brands to move away from the buyer-seller transactional relationship into a brand narrative storytelling kind of arena, which is really interesting how, how they do it. Um, the other perspective is for the brands, of course, that, I mean, 
uh, ISPO is growing in attention, growing in interest, growing in visitors, and it's getting more and more relevant to be uh, in that space. However, my, my learnings from being there and seeing how the brands operate is that it's also really important to uh, realize for brands that this is a new game. Uh, it's mm. not, you don't send the traditional sales team to sit there with your Excel sheets and, uh, and write uh, uh, orders. This is about coming down there and promoting your brand story and meeting the fans of your brand, if that is buyers, press, visitors, etc. So there's um, a bit more like commitment uh, for, for brands to have this like before, during and after kind of strategy. Mm. Um, and what I can see, and I mean, you also know how it used to be if we compare ISPO with Pitiomo, uh, for example, and, right. and you, you, come, you come to the, to the press room uh, uh, in, in, at Pity and you're like bombarded with press releases and boxes and lookbooks and everyone is there <laughs> trying to promote their new drop and what, what's happening and, and stuff. And, and when I came to the press room this time to ISPO, I was like, Oh, it's going to be exciting to see uh, what's what's been promoted by the brand. And uh, to be honest, I think it was three brands of all the 2,400 exhibitors that actually placed their press uh, folders in the press room, which means right. that uh, the entire room was empty compared to Pitioma, where you can't hardly get into the room because of all the uh, all the press information. So part of that is that we are more digital now, but part of that is also that I think that m many of the sports and outdoor brand can learn from, from, from this and, and have more of an approach to move away from the buyer-seller uh, transactional uh, approach into this brand narrative um, approach. Well, fascinating observations from our editor-at-large, Felix Ekstrom. We'll definitely keep covering this space. And there's actually a part three of Fredrik's uh, um, reporting from ISPO coming in written form uh, next week uh, on ScandinavianMind.com. So make sure to stay tuned to our weekly dispatch newsletter. Go to our newly designed website. I can't plug this enough. Our creative director, Erik Olofsson Haviku, has worked really hard on putting our new website together. Looks awesome. Better reading experience. And from I, what I learned from our tech guys, uh, highly improved loading time. So that's also important. Uh, Fredrik, thank you so much for doing this reporting for us this week. Uh, until next week, goodbye. Thank you.